Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jerry Minnick. I'm the program director from the Lake Sumter Computer Society of Leesburg, Florida. I have 50 slides in my presentation, and my last slide will include my email address. I do not plan on talking that fast as we go through the presentation, but I wanted to give you a feel for where I'm coming from when I talk about my presentation. Sometimes we're not too happy with our computer, be it a laptop or a desktop. This presentation will cover Windows XP, which is only good until April of 2014, Windows Vista 7 and 8. Why do I need to, to do performance on my computer? We're going to talk about that. Because it's springtime, we'll call it spring cleaning. What do I do if I spill something on my PC or my keyboard? What different maintenance tasks can I perform on my computer that will allow it to operate at top performance. What programs are available for me to clean up my computer? How can I disable programs that slow down my computer when it starts or when it's trying to, in fact, accomplish a task with a program? What are the best ways to update my applications and security tools? And how do I run disk cleanup? These are the things we'll be covering in the next 48 slides. Why do I do maintenance? I do maintenance because my computers, and I have four laptops, are complex, small digital devices, and they need tender, loving care. And when I'm doing physical maintenance on my computers, the first thing I do is turn them off, and of course with a laptop, I remove the battery from the laptop and make sure that all the cords and cables going into my laptop have been disconnected. And then I use a microfiber cloth to clean my screen. And I do this quite often because one of my laptops is in fact a Windows 8 touch screen. But I want to warn you about cleaning a touch screen or a widescreen, flat screen TV or any other flat screen with a microfiber cloth. When you clean the screen with the cloth, be careful about applying too much pressure. You can, in fact, push too hard on the screen and destroy some of the electronics built into the screen. So if you have a stubborn stain or print on your screen, then you need to spray a little Windex or some other cleaning solution, non-abrasive, um, on to the microfiber cloth and then clean again to get that stubborn stain off. You need to vacuum around your exhaust ports with a round brush from your vacuum cleaner and be careful about static electricity. Vacuum cleaners with metal hoses and parts can in fact give you static electricity and that can be dangerous to your computer. Clean the mouse and the keyboard with a handy wipe. Run a cotton swab around and clean out those ports on your um, laptop so that you have a good, clean entry and exit point for air that has to circulate through your laptop and give you cooling. That's for the physical cleaning. All right? If a spill happens on your keyboard, the first thing you should do is reach over and unplug it or emergency, emergency 
shut down your computer. If I have an emergency shutdown from my computer, this is how I perform it. I push the on-off switch to my computer and hold it down and slowly count to 10. Somewhere in that countdown, the computer will actually shut off, but I continue to hold down the on-off button. Then you can need to disconnect the keyboard and turn it over. Don't shake it. When the keyboard is upside down, block the keys with a cloth or a paper towel. And then blow some compressed air from your vacuum cleaner discharge or one of those cans of air into the keys, between the keys, while it's upside down. Leave the keyboard overnight to dry and ensure that all traces of moisture have evaporated before using the keyboard again. Otherwise, you're going to have problems. If you're using the compressed canned air, make sure to hold the can upright. If you tilt it at an angle, you can cause some moisture to gather where you're in fact spraying. Oh, by the way, here's a little extra. If your cell phone gets wet, don't panic. Do not shake it. That spreads the liquid around. Turn it off. Take the back off. Remove the battery. Wipe the cell phone down with a dry cloth as soon as possible and then put it in a Ziploc bag with some dry white rice. Now that's uncooked dry white rice. And let it set overnight and at a minimum when you start it up the next day you may have successfully cured your wet cell phone problem. Maintenance that will clean up your PC's clutter is going to be covered in the next couple slides. The first thing you want to do prior to doing spring cleaning, maintenance tasks, etc., is to set a restore point. If your PC is healthy, it is to your advantage to set restore points. Why? Two reasons. Number one, if something goes wrong while you're doing maintenance, spring cleaning, you can go back to the restore point you set before you started and bring your computer back to normal. The second reason I want you to set a restore point is so that you'll know how to do it when in fact if you're a little under pressure because of some problem, knowing how to set a restore point or to bring a restore point back is easier once you've done it. If you've never set a restore point, do it when your computer is healthy. All right? Restore points do not delete so photos or documents that you've created. They will purge those programs that you've put into your computer since the last restore point and make sure that your system is returned to a previous healthy state. Restore point doesn't fix all problems, but it becomes in handy quite often. Remember, not all software that you put on your computer gets along with other software that is already on your computer. Softwares can fight with each other and cause problems. How do you do a restore point on Windows XP and Windows Vista? Is covered on slide 8. How you set a restore point on Windows 7 is covered on slide 9. 
and how you set a restore point on Windows 8 is covered on slide 10. I am not going to go through these procedures step by step, but I include them in my presentation so that if you've never done it before, you can in fact do it when your computer is healthy. Tidy up your computer. Get rid of the junk that's on your computer. And there's a lot of junk that collects all the time on your computer. I use CCleaner. CCleaner is freeware and it comes from filehippo.com. That's one of the places I get most of my downloads from because filehippo.com is a trusted site. And the reason I go to filehippo.com is because if I went to the CCleaner website, I would have to go through three or four different pages of the website to find the free CCleaner. And by going to filehippo.com, as soon as I click on CCleaner, it takes me to where I can download it for free. When you're downloading a program, it should be a two-step two process. Download by saving it on your computer, then go on your computer and install the software. I'll cover this a little bit more later. Here's a sample of file hippo web page and as you can see I have put a red arrow in on CCleaner and once you click on CCleaner then of course this page comes up and you have to be careful whether you're using file hippo or major geeks which is another trusted website for downloading programs you have to be careful about where you click to start the download Advertisements pop up on these pages, and those advertisements will download other programs that you may not want on your computer. The download for all of the software you find at filehippo.com is over there on the right hand side on the top where it says download here. Another reason why I like File Hippo, it doesn't get too confusing. CCleaner removes a whole bunch of stuff off your computer. I actually have two cleaners on my computer. One of them is CCleaner and the other one is Glary, G L A R Y, Utilities. Glary Utilities and CCleaner, I run them frequently. I keep my computer cleaned up. And you can see the long list of stuff that CCleaner will take off your computer. I've had numerous instances of people saying to me, well, I downloaded CCleaner and I ran it, I ran an analyze and it showed me all this stuff it was going to take off and I never did take it off because I was scared I was taking off something that I shouldn't. My personal experience is I have run CCleaner on hundreds, hundreds of computers over the years and never had a problem. CCleaner is not overly aggressive, but it does a good job. Another thing you need to take a look at is your startup folder. And what is a startup folder? A startup folder is a folder on your computer that when you start your computer, it runs through and when any programs in there that are enabled, they will start running in the background. Programmers who write apps and programs are told Part of that program will be put this program in their startup folder. We want it running in the background so that it's instantly ready for the user to use. 
if you go into your startup folder and you stop a program from running in the background, you do not eliminate the program. It's just not running in the background and eating up the resources that you have in your computer. A lot of programs running in the background and your computer boots up very slowly, takes a long time. There are different ways to approach disabling startup programs in your computer. You can follow this procedure here, which is you bring up the run command option, then you type in msconfig, which stands for Microsoft Configuration Utility, and then you select the startup tab. I will show you this in a second. And then you disable unnecessary programs, and then you restart your computer to make those changes that you have made in the startup tab effective. So this is what the run command looks like on the computers. This is what the system configuration would look like in Windows 8. But you can see the Startup tab has been selected. And it says to manage startup items, use the Startup section of the Task Manager. So in Windows 8, they, used, they moved the Startup function over into Task Manager. This is what Windows Startup looks like in Windows 8. And I like it because it gives you a startup impact column all the way over there on the right hand side. And these are all the programs that have been written to run in the background. And some of them I leave enabled, some of them I disable. Now, as an example, since I've disabled LastPass installer. That doesn't mean LastPass won't run. That means it's not running in the background. And I can enable it anytime I want to. This is what the MS configuration from run would look like on Windows XP, Vista, or Windows 7. And as you can see, there is an explanation of the startup item, the manufacturer, and then the command written in program. As you can see from my example of my Windows 7 computer here, I have only four programs running in the background. My Seagate dashboard, SpyBot, Microsoft Intel Point, and my security client, which is uh, Windows, Microsoft Security Essentials, excuse me. All the rest of those programs are not running in the background, and that's the way I like it, because my computer starts up a lot quicker, and I have all my resources available to me. If you're not sure, when you look at this configuration on your screen of what these different programs are, you can always go and look them up at this website. And this website will allow you to enter the EXE value in the little search box down here, and then it comes up with what is the good thing to do with that program that's starting up. Sometimes when you see something in this list that's running in the background, it can in fact be an infection that you have on your computer. So looking it up here from this website, you'll find that infection listed as an example. All right. 
what I ran through here was MSN MSGR.exe. And you can see in some cases that's a Trojan, in some cases it's a worm, in some cases it's a valid program. Okay, so you have the resources available to look those things up on the internet. Also, if you go to bleepingcomputer.com and go to the startup list, you can do the search just like we did on the last website. So this is one resource here. And there's another resource here at bleepingcomputer.com to look up the programs that are running in the background and find out from the experts whether you ought to leave them running in the background or stop them. Another way to clean up your startup folder is to use CCleaner and go to the tools section of CCleaner. Go to the startup tab of the tools section and then pick the program and either enable it or disable it depending on what's available up here. Once you do this, you can save those changes into your documents folder and then you must restart your computer to have those startup changes take effect. So don't forget, every time you make a change to the startup folder, you need to restart your computer. When I'm making changes to my startup folder, the first thing I do is set a restore point. Update your applications. There are a couple programs that are available on the internet that will do updating of your application programs for you automatically. But it's important that the updates to programs and applications running on your computer are the latest configurations for your safety and for the performance of those programs, you need to have the latest update. A lot of programs give you the option to check for updates, and so the best time to do it is when you're running that program. Before you start running that program, find out where the update checker is, and check and make sure you have the latest program running. An update checker that I have used in the past is right on the File Hippo web page, and it's called FileHippo.com Update Checker. It's very handy. It puts a icon on your desktop. It's a small footprint program, and when you run it, you get a list like you see in this slide here and the list tells you which programs you need to update and which ones you don't. Windows updates. Windows updates are pieces of software that is coming out from Microsoft. Now, I do not run automatic updates, automatic Windows updates on any of my computers, and there's a lot of different reasons why I don't do that. In Windows XP, Vista, and 7, you can follow this step-by-step -step procedure and run a check to see that you have all the latest updates. Right? When I get an update message saying 
updates are available from my computer. Then I open it up, I check on it, I look up the knowledge base number to find out exactly what that update is doing. And then I choose to either leave it alone or install it onto my computer. The reason I don't do automatic updates is because automatic updates is controlled by Microsoft. And when they want to make an update to your computer, if it's not Patch Tuesday, they may do it in the middle of you doing something on your computer, and that upsets your little apple cart. Uh, I've had people complain to me that they get up and walk away from their computer and come back five minutes later, and it's a blue screen saying, we're shutting down and making uh, the following updates. 10 of 24, and they have to sit there and wait. They were in the middle of something when that happened. That's automatic updates taking control of your computer. If you want to change the way updates from Microsoft are made on your computer, go to the control panel, go to Windows Update. It brings up a screen that looks something like this. Click on Change Settings. And the one I choose is download updates, but let me choose whether to install them. That's the option I use. And then down here in the notification area in the lower right hand portion of my screen, I'll get a little indicator, a notification saying updates are available for my computer. And that's when I check to see which ones I want to install or not. How do I check? Well, I look at the list of the updates that are available, and I see if they, in fact, apply to me. If, for example, the important updates are all about security, I pretty much take those. Okay. If the optional updates are things like they want to update the Bing bar or update some other toolbar, I don't choose to allow those things to automatically download into my computer. So another reason why I stay away from automatic updates is because I like to control what updates are on my computer, not Microsoft or somebody else. But this KB number you see here on this slide after each one of the security updates, if you go into Google search and just put in the KB number, it'll come up with a page that explains in pretty plain language, pretty good plain language, what that update is all about. Your hard drive is an important part of your computer. You have to keep your hard drive healthy. One way that you can keep it healthy is to get rid of junk files that fill up your hard drive. Your hard drive also gets fragmented. What is fragmented? Fragmented is files that are on your hard drive that are in not all in one spot. They're fragged around the hard drive. Your hard drive is spinning at 5,000 to 10,000 RPM, somewhere in that area, and it's really the slowest thing in your computer. And so when you write information on the hard drive, it's not always contiguous. So when you have a fragmented hard drive and you're running a program, it takes longer for the computer to open the files and perform security scans. So you need to clean up and do a defragment. And I don't use the defragmenter that comes with Windows. I use a third party one. There's a half a dozen good third party fragment 
defraggers on the internet available on Major Geeks or available at File Hippo. And I suggest you do that. Disk Cleanup is another utility you should run about once every two weeks at least. All right. C Cleaner, Glarity Utilities, these cleaning third party programs don't take everything off. C Cleaner picks up some stuff they overlook. So I run C Cleaner almost every day when I get off the internet, and I run Disk Cleanup Utility that comes with Windows at least once every two weeks. Part of the maintenance procedure. Disk Cleanup removes these following things from your computer, and some of these are missed by CCleaner or Glary Utilities. In order to get to Disk Cleanup in Windows 8, you open the charms bar, click on search, type in disk cleanup, click on settings, and away you go. In Windows XP Vista and 7, you can click on the start button, all programs, accessories, system tools, and under system tools you'll find disk cleanup. Or in Windows 7, you can type Disk Cleanup into the search bar, and it'll bring it up also. Run Disk Cleanup frequently. Disk Cleanup does give you some options. After it scans your hard drive to find out what it can clean up, it's going to bring up a display, and that display needs to be looked at very carefully by you and all the little boxes that are available to be checked need to be checked. Example, disk cleanup in this kind of display on your computer is calculating what it can clean up. In this display, it's trying to tell you what on your hard drive you can get rid of with disk cleanup to free up disk space. You should make sure that all these little boxes over here on the left hand portion of this display have a check mark in them. And then if you want to know what these things are, if you select it, like the blue selection of download program files, there's a description right down there about what downloaded program files are. So it's really quite easy for you to understand what's going on here in disk cleanup. Once you've run the disk cleanup, you get this display, you click on OK, and another little pop-up comes up and says, are you sure? And you go, yes, I'm sure. Delete the files. And then it takes off and does its thing. This cleanup usually takes two to four minutes, five minutes to calculate. And takes half of that time to accomplish the task of this cleanup. The first time you run it, if you've never run it on that computer before, it can take quite a bit longer to do. Update your security tools. Your security tools are very important. They keep you safe on the Internet, and you need to make sure that you run an update on all of your security tools, whether it's a antivirus, a firewall, um, or a spyware blaster, or super anti-spyware, whatever, okay? Um, keep those programs updated and make sure that they're running correctly. 
uh, I always have uh, my Microsoft Security Essentials, which is my anti-spyware I use, displayed in my notification area. And every time I light off my computer, I look down there to make sure my little Microsoft Security Essentials symbol is green. If it's not green, I open it up and find out why it's yellow or red and make sure it's up to date. That's my best form of protection. Deleting programs. Just in the last month in helping other people from the Lake Sumter Computer Society with their computers, I have taken their computers home and tried to clean them up for them. One lady had 153 programs on her computer, and she didn't know what half of them were doing. She had a lot of piggyback software on her computers, and piggyback software is that software that's included when you do a download with some other program. So I spent hours taking programs off her computer and went from 153 programs down to 87 and of course that gave her more space on her hard drive and the computer started running normally. With so many programs and so many piggyback programs on your computer you can slow your computer down and make it run like it's immersed in oil or water. Uninstall programs through programs and features, or you can uninstall programs by add and remove in XP. I use a third party program to delete programs off my computers, and it's called Revo Uninstaller. Okay, this is what programs and features looks like in. Windows 7 and Windows 8 and when you select a program then uninstall change or repair comes up. Let me go back here for a second. Notice that once you select a program in programs and features organize, uninstall, change or repair comes up. I have used repair more than once to repair a program on the computer that in fact got corrupted and it has saved my bacon more than once. Now the reason I don't use programs and features which comes with Windows operating system is because it can leave some registry items and or extra files from that program you uninstall on your computer. So I use Revo Uninstaller. If you Google Revo Uninstaller free, you will find a web page. I'll show it to you in a second. And you can run Revo Uninstaller and get rid of programs on your computer which in fact is a four-step process. First thing they do is they set a restore point. Then they run an uninstall on the program that you're trying to get rid of. Then they search for leftover registry items and you have a choice of deleting them or leaving them on there. And then they search for leftover files. And again, they give you a list and you can decide whether or not you want to get rid of them or not. I usually run Revo Uninstaller to get rid of programs on my computer and I get rid of all the registry items and get rid of all the files that are left over on the hard drive. I've never had a problem with Revo Uninstaller. There are times when they run an uninstall program where in fact the uninstall program takes you back to the internet and they try to convince you not to get rid of that program to keep it on there. As soon as that happens during the uninstall process, 
I click out of the internet and go back to Revo uninstall. And then if they say to me in the middle of the Revo uninstall process, the four step process, if Revo uninstall comes up and says, you have to restart your computer to get rid of these things. I choose not to restart my computer until I've finished the four steps in Revo uninstall. And then I'll restart my computer. If I'm working on somebody's computer and trying to get rid of a lot of programs, I use Revo uninstaller to take three or four or five programs off. And then I restart the computer and then restart Revo Uninstaller. Why do I restart the computer? Because when you do, your computer, when it starts up, is going through a program called POST, Power On Startup Test. And it gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling that my computer is still OK, even though I've taken some programs off. This is what Revo Uninstaller looks like. If you scroll down, as a result of putting in Revo Uninstaller free, as you can see right here on the internet, you come up with this page. If you scroll down to the bottom, you want to select the download for the free one, and away you go. It's a good program. Other uninstall software that's available on the internet, and I've used these in the past, and they're still good too, are Slim Computer and a Shampoo Uninstaller. Okay. Again, they find these little pieces of forgotten software, clean them off your drive, free ups, and improve the speed, in some cases, of your computer's performance. Help and support. Help and support on your computer is the book that we used to get 10 or 15 or 20 years ago when you bought a computer. And a lot of people overlook it. All right? You need to open up help and support and educate yourself on to your computer. Look up such things as antivirus, Windows Defender, firewall, disk cleanup, startup, etc. These things are in excruciating detail already located on your computer, and that's why when you bought your computer recently, all you got was one single piece of paper that told you how to plug it in and turn it on, because the book is on the computer. To review, regular maintenance keeps your computer running. Restore points are very, sometimes very beneficial, and you should set one when your computer's healthy. Disk cleanup is at least a monthly function. You need to do disk cleanup on a regular basis. Keep your programs updated. Make sure that your antivirus, your anti-spyware, your malware bytes, the programs that you have on your computer to protect yourself are in fact always updated. FileHippo.com is a trusted website. So is Major Geeks, Major, M-A-J-O-R, Geeks, G-E-E-K-S.com. All right. And if you got a question, go to the book on your computer under Help and Support. Things to do when you have a healthy computer. And if you have a question on what I presented today, or you want a copy of this presentation, you can get it, of course, from the APCUG website, but you can also email me at programs, lscs, at gmail.com, program, lscs, at gmail.com, and I will send you a copy of this presentation in one of three formats as you request. PDF, PowerPoint, or WordPad outline.
that's just it. Jerry, there, there's a few questions or few and comments right. that were on the chat. Um, for your information, this was from Sid. The Windows Secrets newsletter has a great column recommending updates to install and others to avoid. Any comment? Yes. You familiar with it? Uh, I read okay. that. Uh, I, I've been getting Windows Secrets for many years. Um, uh, I, I send them $20 a year uh, so that I can get Windows Secrets. I look at what is comes out about once a month in Windows Secrets about updates, and I uh, pretty much pay attention to it and follow it. I think that in the past they have been very accurate. Okay, we've got about uh, two and a half minutes. I just there's a couple other comments and a question. Question: Isn't there a problem defragging S an SSD drive? I heard that defragging can cause problems. Sid responded to that that is not really problems, but SSDs has a limited number of write cycles, and defragging will use some of that number. Comment? Exactly. Um, I've read articles on this. I have not gone into SSD yet. In other words, I don't have um, a solid state memory. Um, my latest Windows 8 laptop computer with touchscreen has 32 gigabytes of SSD attached as cache for the hard drive. So I have not done any defrag of my Windows 8 yet. Uh, I think uh, I saw an article in PC Magazine that said that defragging SSD, solid state memory, can in fact shorten life. But the jury was still out on that because they weren't sure. SSD hadn't been around long enough for, you know, those kind of things to make themselves known. Okay. Sorry, I had a got way late no, here. That's all right. uh, Sid also said, uh, for your information, CC Enhancer is an add-on for CCleaner that adds a bunch of additional cleanups. It just puts them in the ccleaner i.ini file. Okay, thank you. And and then finally, uh, John is from the Fox Valley PC Association in Oswego, Illinois. He presently joined the conference using a 4G connection on a tour bus headed south in Indiana. John, thanks for coming aboard. Uh, Really? And uh, we're, we're, enjo we're enjoying the trip. And on that note, Jerry, thank you so much. Uh, that's going to end this session.